Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, and today I'm going to be ranking What's the Story of Morning Glory again. This is going to be the reduxed version, the definitive version, where I, I'm being more generous with my scores. I really considered my um, opinions, really thought through this all. And yeah, this is this is my definitive ranking of What's the Story Morning Glory. And um yeah, this will probably be the last time I talk about it as in a full review type format. And um yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into the ranking, but without us not waste any time here, let's get into my number ten, because we're not including including the um untitled tracks. So let's get into my number ten is Hey Now. This song is absolutely fantastic. Everything about this song is fantastic. Again, the guitar is fantastic here. The lyrics are fantastic, mysterious enough to keep you wondering. And there's a lot going on, but honestly, the song gets a bit repetitive and a little bit long at times, and I can totally see why people say it's the weakest song on the album. It is the weakest song on the album. It shrunk on me. But I'm still giving it 8.5. Still, still fantastic song. Still as good as the best song on Ariana Grande's album. That's how good Oasis were, okay? Next is going to be, um, my number nine, which is going to be She's Electric. I bumped this song up a slot for being a much needed lighthearted break from the rest of the album, for being, sounding absolutely fantastic, for having some Beatles-esque harmonies thrown in, and for having some great guitar riffs, and some great vocals from Liam Gallagher. Yeah. This song grew on me ever so slightly. Deal with it. It's a 9. 9 out of 10 right there. And then we have, um, we have bumped up a slot because of She's Electric and bumped up a slot in general. We have Some Might Say. That riff is undeniable. I still think this song is slightly overrated. Uh, the lyrics don't make sense and all that jazz, but oh my god, that riff, and Liam's vocals, and the melody. This song is so good. It's another nine from me. Number seven, I think. I'm not sure, or was that number seven? No, that was number eight. Um, I just gotta realize, did I just give six songs tens again? No, I gave five songs tens, which means I'm missing something here. No, I'm not. I am just stupid. Number seven is Hello. I bumped up a slide as well. I'm, I'm sorry. This song, I really appreciated it more when reading the lyrics on the lyrical analysis. Um, by the way, comment below if you want to see more of that series. And, um, yeah, this is a definite, definite nine here. I'm giving this a higher score than I gave it before. It is definitely a nine. And... I wouldn't really say this song grew on me, I just think, hey now, shrunk on me, this one, this one just kind of stayed good and got better. And I think I got the fight because my dad said he didn't like it, so there's that. Number six. Yikes! I hate doing re-ranks, I hate going back on what I said. I'm not going back on what I said about Country House. I'm not going back on it at all. Okay, I kind of am. Okay. Only once I started loving the song did I start hating it. Yeah, that's a pretty good description right there. The more I would hear it, it would not leave my brain space. And it got to the point of pure annoyance. And it also pretty much screwed up the band. Well, they made more after that, so we didn't really screw up the band, or whatever, screw it up. Now, I'll say what I will about Katrina. I gave that song a 9.5. That song is not a 9.5. That song is like a 8.5 or a 9. It's still a really good song. I don't care what you say. <laughs> um, speaking of songs that are 9.5s, here we go. This is a damn near perfect song. Um, going back to the Blur and Oasis War, um, can I just say that apparently this song only has three chords, according to Blur. Guess what? Oh, 
come on. Girls and boys really can't have more than four chords. And before you say, oh, well, four chords is more than three. Yes, it is, but four chords is the overused formula of pop music. I I'm not saying Girls and Boys is a bad song at all. Why would I do that? Let me re-rank Park Life. Bye, see you later. But, oh, just... Here's the, here's the thing. Oasis can make a really amazing sounding song that doesn't get boring out of three chords. Repeat, Oasis can make a really good sounding song that doesn't get boring out of three chords. That's a good thing. That's a compliment to Oasis. Saying that song is only three chords is a compliment to Oasis. I sound like I'm shading Blur here. I'm definitely not. I love Blur. But when it comes to this type of situation, that was the most backhanded insult, which makes it a compliment. That's not even a thing, but I made it a thing. Yeah, wow. When I really thought about that, I realized, hey, much of a compliment that is. Yeah, maybe Blur's music was more complex, but was it really back in the Britpop era? Yeah, probably at some times. Like, we're gonna start Country House with whatever that is. Yeah, seriously. Somebody moved to release date up. The competitive nature of the whole thing was stupid. They, um... They said it was probably Damon who moved to release date up. Somebody moved to release date up. I don't know what happened with that. I honestly don't care. I, um, they're like, hey, this song beat Roll Pit to number one. Guess what? Nobody even cares because Wonderwall, Champagne Supernova, and Don't Look Back in Anger came out after this, so, um... Point taken. Also, I saw somebody saying that, um, that Country House is ranked among one of Blur's best songs, and Rolf it is not even in the top 25 best Oasis songs, so that goes to show who's better. Um, who said Country House was one of Blur's best songs again? I ranked it pretty high on the album ranking, I know, I know. I actually forget what I made my number one. Oh, the Universal, right, and Best Days. But that was where the, over Country House, I forgot. Okay, but <laughs> you get my point here. I, I'm, I'm a cliche bitch, but you get my point. What? What sense does that make? Yeah, saying Rolf is not even in Oasis' top 25 best songs, eh, I would disagree there. It's in the top 25. I wouldn't say it's in the top 10 or 15, but still a great song. Then again, given how many 10 out of 10s I've given to Oasis songs, it's possible that this song would not actually be in the top 25. Regardless, it doesn't matter. My point is, that was supposed to be Shade to Blur, and it just kind of sounded like... Um... Do you even do your research? Yeah. Maybe I praised Country House. Maybe I'm annoyed with myself for doing it, but... Okay, there's still a piano thing going on in the back, in the background of that song that reminds me of the Beatles, and I like it, and I don't know why. I like it because it reminds me of the Beatles, so... Whatever. Number five or six or yeah, number five. Yeah. I switched slots. Deal with it. Speaking of four chords. I know lots of critics who like to give four chord four chords songs flack, which is kinda of funny to me because the best there are some great simple songs. Wonderwall is an example of simplicity works so well. This song is amazing. This song is a 10. It's it's 10 out of 10. Oh, by the way, Wolf, it was 9.5. That's the same score I gave Country House. Why did I give it? Okay, never mind. Just moving on. Wolf, if it won the... It didn't win the chart war, but it's the better song, in my opinion. Moving on. Um, we have Wonderwall. Four chords of perfection. Again, the lyrics of this song ambiguous, I love the multiple meanings, I love Liam's vocals on this, I love the cello, I love it's a sad Oasis song, I love everything about this song. There's only one problem. Wonderwall, 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 we're going to build a wall. Yeah, I'm sick of hearing about this song. I'm really sick of it. And also, Don't Look Back in Anger is better, and I realized that too late. original ranking, I said that this song um, and Wonderwall were pretty much interchangeable to me. I, I mostly stand by that argument, but I gave Wonderwall the slight edge in that song, but I had to give this one the edge once I thought about it a little bit more. This is a song I can listen to more and not get sick of, and this is a song that, wow, the, the vocals, 
Noel, this is a song which Noel makes work so well. I love the vocals. I love the chorus. The chorus to this song is absolutely anthemic, mega, huge, fantastic. Singing through the roof. Everybody in the world can just get together and sing. So Sally can wait. This song. This freaking song. Woo! 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 Yeah. Do I even have to talk about the John Lennon references? Number three. Yeah, I had another, a couple other shifts in my top ten. Deal with it. Or my top five. Uh, top ten. What the f am I talking about? Number three. And yes, I think I'm comfortable with this decision. This was number two on my last list. There's nothing else to say about it that I didn't say there or didn't say in the lyrical analysis or didn't say in literally any other video where I've talked about this song. This song is amazing. Absolute 10 out of 10. Absolute underrated. Absolute amazing look at the life of someone who's on drugs. Absolute great Beatles reference. Everything about this song is fantastic. Everything about it. The only reason it's down at number three and not at number two is, as opposed to last time, is just because, just because my number two song gives me more emotional impact and more feelings than this song. This song is phenomenal, but I can't really say I can relate to it, you know what I mean? I'm not a drug addict. P please don't do drugs. PSA, do not do drugs. Bye. But, yeah. Anyway, that out of the way, let's talk about my number two. You probably know where this is going. I know some people are going to say, oh, this song is like slow and boring, or this song is under, is overrated, or what are you talking about, or, oh my god. Guys, I don't know. This song is not, like, objectively better than all these other songs or anything, but I don't know. I have such a weird emotional connection to this song. I can't explain it from the very first time I ever heard this song. It's hard. With a lot of songs, I don't really remember the first time I heard them, but this. I remember the first time I heard this song. I remember, um... I remember this, and I remember sitting about here, somewhere on the floor, either sitting or lying on the floor, I don't remember, and just shaking. That's how this song, this song, I literally have no idea why, but yeah. And you obviously know what my number one is. Now, I'm pretty generous of giving 10s to songs, especially on songs I really like. Basically, to me, a 10 is everything. You, if you have no complaints about it or no criticisms, give it a 10. If you have a slight criticism, 9.5. If you have more criticisms, 9. If you have even more criticism, give it an 8.5, etc. Going down the list. 10 to me is a perfect song, but a perfect song is not that hard to achieve. A perfect song is any song which I have no problem with. Which are a lot of songs that I give it 10s. So glad I didn't give Country House a 10. Okay, back to this video. Champagne Supernova, I've elected to give an 11. I've said this right up front, this song is so complex, look at addiction and all of that stuff, and the lyrics are phenomenal, this song is phenomenal. I'm giving it 11 because it's an exceptional song to me. This song stands out, deserves to be differentiated from the other songs on the album. And this also boosted, this also boosted the album rating up to a 9.6 as opposed to a 9.5, which means it would have been tied if Definitely Maybe. This album is better than Definitely Maybe, don't at me. Yeah, this song, dude, I have no words for how good this song is. This is probably my second or third favorite song of all time. I'm not making that up. I'm not exaggerating. And... You're totally allowed to disagree with me, but this is my opinion, and this song deserves an 11. I put it in a tier of songs like Bohemian Rhapsody or A Day in the Freaking Life, which is my actual favorite song of all time. I've actually said this song is kind of like their version of Day in the Life. And yeah, it is. I love this song. Just, yeah. Oof. 
Alrighty, that guys, that was it for for for, for um the, the morning glory re rank. Hopefully everything goes well with that, and um two more uploads to go. Bye.